old rickshaws. And there's this one person who is a rickshaw uh, <coughs> driver. They sh sh said that he is actually happier than average person in America. A rickshaw driver. And he lives in a very, it, it's like a shanty town. You know the shanty town? The, like little uh, huts or the, you know, the tents near the airport and there are a lot of people kind of a very congested place but this person is happier than average person in America and what makes this person happier than others is because he has a family he may be very uh, much you know, he may struggle a lot during the day he has to work hard but he can go back Home. He has children who are waiting for him. He has a wife and you know, he has a family. It's the family connection, you know. And there is love between the family. That's what makes them happy. You know? If you observe people in uh, any given country, people who are kind towards others, of course, you know, they they will have better health, of generally speaking. They are liked by people, so they are happier. That's, that's, so that's why when His Holiness the Dalai Lama, uh, the, he has traveled extensively in you know, many countries. He has met with doctors, scientists, teachers, many important people and have discussed and what he come to conclusion came to conclusion was that what we find in Indo-Tibetan Buddhist tradition you know the Buddhism that developed in India and brought to Tibet and is preserved to this day the very the kind of key elements that we find in Buddhism, like compassion, love, how to understand our emotions, how to handle or manage our anger, you know, the fears and like that, um, that you find in Buddhist tradition through meditation. These are very, very important um, you know, tools for us to have good health and happiness and good life and that's why scientists you know why do you think the buddhism today is so popular in the world why can you because scientists have been doing studies you know research and they see that meditation like compassion or mindfulness, being mindful, these are very good for your health. And you can study better. If you, you can imagine, if you feel very afraid and you feel not happy, would you be able to study well? No. Right? That anxiety makes you just kind of close up. But if you feel safe, then you will be able to open your hearts and minds and you can study better. Yes? And that's why in the Buddhist tradition, there are many, many tools, you know, that it's wonderful that you come here and, and at Depong and at the Pitu comes in here, you have wonderful teachers who can teach those tools that are in Buddhism. And you can, you can practice. And scientists are showing, actually, you, you are happier and healthier if you are kind, compassionate. I, I, a few years ago, I saw a big article in one of the very, very important magazines called Time Magazine. It's a, one of the very important magazines. And it had the title, 
you know, in that article had the title it said that how to get smarter one breath at a time. How to become smarter one breath at a time. It has to do with the breathing meditation. Mindfulness breathing where you focus your attention to the breath. And then you can study with the venerable Keshilas here, you know, how to be mindful. It's about the focus. What they found was that when children like even younger than you, you know, like the first, second grade, like the six, uh, five, six year old kids, when they were taught how to meditate and learn to focus instead of their mind going all over, I mean, with worries and like that, when they can focus, they found that part of the brain, the brain that helps or that supports your memory, it actually gets thicker. They did. What that means is that if you have better memory, what you learn, you will keep you know, that, that in your memory. And memory is important for learning. Means that you are smarter, you get smarter. So just doing brief exercises or meditation with the breath, you can have your brain that supports memory or that makes you smarter, actually makes stronger. There are many, many studies like that. But I, what I like to emphasize is that, you know, like the Tibetan community that you are seeing here, Ladakh also is a, a very strong culture that you have very strong roots in Buddhist tradition. If you really want to be happy, 